Dear students, I have come with a new module, Rights of an Unpaid Seller. See, these terms are important in a contract of sale of goods, unpaid seller. First, we have to understand the meaning of unpaid seller, then what are the rights. This will be the part 1 and part 2 I will explain in the next module because it is a lengthy module. Now, meaning of an unpaid seller, who is an unpaid seller? A seller is deemed to be an unpaid seller when under certain circumstances. Two circumstances, one is entire price has not been paid. So the full amount seller has not collected from the buyer. Second is a bill of exchange or the negotiable instrument received is not honored. Usually we know that anything if you are buying on credit, they will ask for the post dated check or bill of exchange. So when this is not honored, then the seller become unpaid seller because that means the buyer has to make the payment. Now what are the characteristics of an unpaid seller? Goods are sold on cash terms and not on credit. Maybe personal relationship, family members, friends and relatives. So something like that, you took that item, you have not made the payment. So you have to remember that it's not on credit terms. Second is cash is not paid fully. If it's personal relationship and all, you will tell that half the amount I will pay, half I will pay later. Then they are not able to pay, make the payment. Then the entire amount is not paid or part payment is not made. So the payment has not come to the seller, it's full amount. Negotiable instrument received is dishonored. The post dated check or the bill of exchange is dishonored when presented for payment. Seller has not refused to accept pay, payment. We have to remember that. See, when the terms and conditions between the seller and buyer will change, when they, are, when they have to make the payment and all, their problems are their consequences will be there. They may not accept, they may not behave properly. But here you have to remember, when the buyer is making the payment, the seller has to accept that he cannot refuse the payment. Then, it will, then the seller will not come as an unpaid seller. Now, rights of an unpaid seller, I have explained with the help of a diagram. Rights of an unpaid seller, two points, against goods and against the buyer personally. So, here, against the goods we are going to explain in this module. Rights of an unpaid seller against goods. Three points are there. Right of lien, right of stoppage of goods in transit and right of resale. So, here, right of lien. Section 47 to 49 of the Sale of Goods Act 1930 states the right of lien. Lien is the right to retain possession of goods and refuse to deliver them to the buyer until the price is paid. This term lien is attached to banks. There are two terms, general lien and particular lien. See, general lien is always possible with the business people. They will have lot of overdraft will be their loans and loans will be there from the bank. So what they will do? They will pledge all their assets, all their documents and they will, it will be like a running agreement with the bank. That meaning when all the loans are repaid, then only they will get all the documents from the bank. Till then, the bank will have a lien. Whereas for individuals, it's a particular lien. If you want to buy a vehicle, you the vehicle, doc, if you are taking it on a loan from the bank, till the loan is repaid, the documents, actual vehicle documents will be with the bank. Once you clear that, you will get that. That meaning, it is when an individual is taking a loan, the lien with the bank will be the particular lien. It can be for a house property, it can be for a vehicle or anything, consumer durables. So then, till you repay the loan, the documents will be with the bank. So here, if the buyer has not made the payment, seller will keep the possession of goods. So that is the right of lien. Until the payment, full payment is collected, he will not make, he will not release the goods. Now, right of lien is a possessory lien. Possessory lien meaning the right to retain the goods till the payment is made. So the lien can be exercised as long as seller has possession of goods. One important thing you have to remember: once the seller is when the seller is giving the goods to the transport or the carrier for delivering it to the buyer, then he lost the right to clean. Because seller should have the item, the goods with him, then only he can exercise this lien. So the extra expenses like insurance, go down charges, security, etc. Which he, the seller may have to incur till the payment is recovered from the buyer. He cannot claim it from the buyer. It will be the seller's expense only. So this is an important thing. Seller can retain the possession of goods. All extra charges should be borne by the seller. He cannot charge it from the buyer. Now, circumstances where right to lien can be exercised. First is where goods are sold without any stipulation as to credit. When there is a regular deal with the buyer and seller, this is possible. They will not mention about the credit. Sometimes buyer may not be able to arrange funds. So that will happen. 
then where goods are sold on credit but the term credit term has expired once is it's on sold on cash terms second is on credit terms the sale happened and then the sale term they are not able to exercise the sale term is or the credit term is ex expired he is not able to honor his word then when the buyer becomes insolvent if the buyer is insolvent also this can this can happen now rules regarding lien possessory lien always as i mentioned seller has got only a possessory lien the uh, uh, the duty or the he has the right to keep the goods with him not to part with the goods till the buyer will make the payment this right is lost the moment seller parts with the possession of goods so that meaning one seller is giving it to the buyer's agent or he is giving it to a transport company to deliver it to the buyer's go down then the seller will lose the this lien because seller should have the possession of the goods if you want to exercise this that's an important thing so lien depends on actual possession of goods and not title even if having the documents with him for the goods it is not he is not entitled to right of lien he should have the actual documents with him see if it's a smartphone if the smartphone is handed to the handed over to the buyer but the actual document is with the seller it's not going to serve the purpose he should have the smartphone with him the seller and the documents also then possession of goods by seller does not expressly exclude the right of lien so we have to remember the possession is important in this case to exercise this lien now this right is for the price alone and not for other charges all extra charges whatever seller has to incur go down charges security insurance everything seller has to bond he cannot charge it from the buyer so this right is only for the price he has to recover from the buyer if part delivery of goods is made seller can retain the goods at to be delivered part payment is made out then he can insist on the remaining amount unpaid seller should not part with this lien on goods he should not say that i expressly claim I mean, you can keep it excluding the right of lien then the like seller will lose this right so the contract of sale is with the right of lien with the seller till he collects the payment now termination of lien when lien is terminated as per section 49 of the sale of goods act 1930 unpaid seller losses loses his lien under three situations this already i mentioned one is when the goods are delivered to a carrier or any bailey goods are transferred to the transport company the to deliver it to the buyer's office or the buyer's agent when the buyer or his agent rightfully obtains possession of the goods sometimes buyer or his agent will come and collect the item third is when the seller expressly or impliedly waives his right of lien seller cannot exclude the right of lien when he is selling something it should be the sale should be with the right of lien now types of waiver two are there one is express waiver second is implied waiver now express waiver contract of sale of goods excludes the right of lien that meaning the seller is selling i am making the sale without this right of lien so it's a blunder to do that it should not be a big mistake because we don't know whether the buyer will make the payment or not even if the price is not paid or not seller is selling that i don't want the right of lien so that is the biggest mistake a seller can make so this waiver will not give the seller right to retain possession of goods if this condition is included in the contract of sale seller cannot possess the goods till the payment is made so implied waiver the waiver is applicable when goods are sold on credit when you are selling on credit but a fresh term of credit is granted to the buyer so the credit 3 months or something like that he was not able to fulfill then the buyer and seller is selling uh, talking again and then they are giving the extended credit term it is possible sometimes covid time and all they did that when they lost the job when they Uh, when they were not factories closed down or the business unit is closed down all this is possible so this lien cannot be exercised until the expiry of the new term of credit actual credit term was one month again seller is granting one more month so the seller has to wait the extra one month to complete the payment now the last point i want to explain from this lien once lost cannot be revived see once the seller lost the lien it cannot be revived so one thing you have to remember Edule G versus John Brothers. This case decision is important in this regard. What happened? This plaintiff bought a uh, refrigerator from the seller. So here, then, see, he bought the second-hand refrigerator. Then the buyer started using that also. So after that, the buyer found that it is not working according to his satisfaction. See the implied warranty. What we mentioned that 
whenever buyer is buying something it should fulfill his requirements and he should be happy with that product whatever is intended the purpose for which he purchased that the item should fulfill that so the buyer thought that it's not fulfilling his condition so you have to remember that seller has transferred the refrigerator to the buyer he has sent it to the buyer buyer started using that then only they found that so the buyer requested for some repairs for the refrigerator he sent it back to the seller so here what happened is buyer was not ready to pay the repair charges so the seller retained possession of the good the refrigerator till the buyer will make the payment for the repairs extra repairs i made i am not going to deliver the item he the buyer went to the court and the court decided that seller lost the lien when he has at first time when he transferred when he gave the refrigerator to the buyer for use so again for the second time when he had sent for repairs he cannot retain possession of the refrigerator saying that buyer has to make the payment for the repair so that lien is lost in the first when the seller is transferred to the buyer that time the lien is lost he cannot revive that again so that will come as a second condition and the buyer seller cannot exercise his right of lien for the second time so this this case will clearly explain the lien once loss cannot be revived so this is what i wanted to explain in this module happy learning thank you